All right, take water breaks at any time. Let's get going. You don't need um, shoes or socks. I mean, you can wear socks if you want, but you don't want to slip. And ideally, you want to be able to point and flex your feet. So keeping our uh, feet shoes free helps with that. All right, we're going to start in first position. The chair is going to be to your side. You don't really need your chair right now, but we're just going to use it. Oh, let me start this music. All right. So this is my standard warm up. It kind of wakes up the body and eases us into the workout. It's always going to be the outside arm or leg that moves. So this chair is closer to my right leg, probably your left if you're facing me. So it's my left arm and my left side that's getting the stretch, reaching up and over. My feet are in first position. Heels are together, toes apart. So bar is ballet inspired, which is why we talk about a few of these positions. Good, make sure you're reaching up and then over, up and then return. So really getting that side bend, side stretch, that lengthening. Good, I'm gonna add a leg lift, not very high. This kind of takes away from the side bend, but it starts to wake up our hip flexors and our outer thigh muscles as we lift to the side. I'm just leaning slightly into the chair, but I'm not putting all my weight into that chair. For safety, you don't want to put all your weight into that chair. You don't want to ever pull on it because it is not bolted to the ground. It is not going to keep you from falling uh, if you pull on it. If you use it for balance, it will keep you from falling. Last one. Let's just hold our arms still in front of us and focus on the leg lift beside. I'm keeping that turn out. So my kneecaps are facing up and I'm reaching to the corner of the room. And I'm pointing my toes. If your foot's cramping up for any reason, you can always flex your feet. Give it a little more calf stretch if you flex your feet. Now I'm actually gonna direct my leg straight forward, but I'm still trying to maintain that turnout. So it's almost as if I'm leading with the arch of my foot. If your arm is tired, you can keep your arm down. So I'm starting from that turned out position and I'm reaching that arched foot forward. My leg is pretty much straight. Feel a little bit on the inner thigh here. And now we're going to warm up the hip flexor. So I'm going to bend the knees. Going back to the corners. If you want to add a little reach and pull, you can. Do about four more. Okay, I'm actually, because I'm going to stay facing you guys, I'm just going to move my chair to the other side as opposed to turning around and having my back towards you. So I'm on the other side now. You can do uh, either lift your chair or you can turn around, but just make sure that you can see me. Up and over. So we're on the other side now. Everything we did on that first side, we're gonna do on the second side. Whoops, in my, in the chandelier here. So other things to think about while we're doing all these movements is posture. Our abs are gonna be drawn in. And I generally want my chest lifted for that good length and posture. And if you've just woken up, like me, this is a great way to ease into the workout. All right. Adding the leg, oh, sorry. Yeah, adding the leg. This requires short-term memory. Whatever I did on the other side, it has to do on the side. Hopefully I remember everything. All right, last 
one, and we're just going to do the leg. So I'm going to just sort of keep my arm still. Try not to use momentum here. We're just kind of like kicking it up. You want to like lift with control. Again, you can points or flex the feet. My elbows are, are, are rounded, they're a slight bent. I don't want to shrug my shoulders, keeping those shoulders down away from the ears. If you really want to challenge your balance, you can let go of the chair. You can also do this, whatever you'd like to do. All right, let's sweep it to the front, but keep that turn out. So kind of working the inner thighs here, thinking about that arch of the foot, always turned forward. So this becomes neutral, see that? And my kneecaps face forward. Here I'm having a turn out. This just makes us target inner and outer thigh muscles because we normally, I think people without thinking about it, usually walk neutral. I don't think we walk like this. All right, so if you remember the next exercise, it was a knee bend. So we can add the arm hole if you'd like. Good, keep going. Let me just do a quick check here on what's going on. All right, maybe about four more. We're gonna just keep the chair on this side. What we're doing right now is gonna be um, neutral, as in it can be done on either side. We're not lifting a leg. It's gonna be heel raises. And again, if you wanna challenge your balance, you can let go of that chair. You can even have your hands up if you want. If that helps you with your posture, keeping the chest lifted. So we're warming up our calves here. Okay, go ahead and step your feet out to about shoulder distance and continue with the heel lift. But this is second position. When your feet are turned out and your heels are about hip or shoulder distance apart. So your heels are no longer together. Again, whatever you want to do with your arms, regardless of your arm position, we also have good posture. All right, we're going to go into a little plie. And I do mean very little. So your knees shouldn't shoot past your toes. We're still in second position. Probably don't need the chair at all for this. So giving our calves a little break. And by the way, feel free to take your feet a little wider. You do want it to be comfortable for your hips and your knees and toes all tracking in line with each other. But this is not a typical squat. A plie is actually about vertical spine. So you want the turnout so that your spine can stay vertical. A typical squat has your toes facing forward and we actually drop the chest um, not to round it, but we tilt the torso, or we tilt the spine. But here, from side view, you really want to keep that torso vertical. So feel free to take your feet out a little wider if you need to. And then we're going to go down into the plie and then up onto the toes again. You'll notice it's a little more challenging to get on the toes if your feet are too wide. Um, so adjust as needed. Right, keep going. All right, finish up with about four more. Three, two, and one. Yeah, it really doesn't matter what side you start it on. I'm just going to move this back over. 
Uh, we're going to be doing arabesque focus today, and this is all about the hip flexor. So whenever we're sitting, our hip flexor is um, shortened. So the arabesque takes this leg back and really stretches this. So we are going to be facing our chair. And for you, if you want to like put your chair right here so you can see me easily, that's fine. It, it really doesn't matter how you are in relations to the, your device. Okay, I am going to be sideways to mine so that you can see my position. So you don't want to position yourself too far because you don't want to be leaning here. But there is a slight lean. You don't want to be too close either. I'm going to start with the leg that's closest to you guys. My standing leg is slightly bent. It's not locked straight. Imagine there's a line that moves behind the standing heel. And you're going to go from one side of the line to the other side of the line. So out to the side and then cross the body. So that would look like this. And this lifting leg is going to be very straight. All right, we're not lifting with weights on our ankles. So we're going to focus on pointing the toe or feel free to flex and reaching that leg as far back as we can. I would start here and see how this feels. Again, standing leg is slightly bent and the standing leg is going to start to feel work. In just a little bit, I'm going to have you back away from the chair a little bit more. But right now, you're going to lift the leg. I'm going to actually slow it down. We're going to lift the leg as high as you can with control, squeezing the butt, but also squeezing the abs. Because if you don't squeeze the abs and you start to arch into your back, it's going to hurt the lower back. Good. I know the standing leg is probably a little fatigued, but we're staying on the same leg. Back up just a little bit. This allows your torso to tilt a little bit more. And then you should be able to lift your leg higher because there's more tilt in the torso. So we're going from here with leg movement to here. And now I would like you, if you can, to try not touching the floor. So we're going behind that imaginary line, cross body, not cross body, and keeping the lift in the leg. So keeping the lift in the leg, that means the leg doesn't really get a break anymore. However, does it mean you can't do what we were doing earlier? A little more vertical, tapping the leg down. Of course, you can always do that, giving you options here. So this is kind of the principle of pulsing, where the range of motion is decreased, so the muscles don't really get to rest as much. Keep those abs nice and tight. You still want to think about a lifted chest. This is a drop chest. So think about that lifted chest. All right, let's finish up here. Four, three, two, and one. Good. You don't really have to turn your chair around. You can just lift your other leg. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. But if you have, uh, just so you can see what it looks like on the other side. I'm going to start a little closer. Tap the ground. Tap the ground. Once I have this torso tilt set, I'm trying to keep my torso at the same position. So really stabilizing with the abs. And when I say side to side, cross body, I mean, you don't need to be super extreme about it. But the idea is that you lift and kind of create like this arc motion. Because your hips do that. Your hips don't just move forward and back. They move in a circular pattern. They can move completely like this, right? All across the body, that sort of stuff. We're trying to get that range of motion in the hip. As the standing leg gets tired, we're going to want to straighten it out because it puts the work into our joints and takes it out of the muscles. But really try your best to keep it in the muscles. 
All right, finish up, maybe just do two more or something, and then back up a little bit from your chair. Keep that spine straight, that chest lifted. Do a couple with a greater range, greater lift, and then decrease the range. So you're only going about a quarter or halfway down. And you're still circling the leg, semi-circle. You guys are doing great. I know you feel it. I feel it. We all feel it. I really need to do a better job of counting from side to side. I was kind of basing up on my legs. <laughs> All right, finishing up about four more. Three. Still thinking about the lift. Two. Lower. Lift. Lower. Lift. Last one. All right, shake out those legs. I'm going back to that first leg, um, which also because of my chair happens to be my outside leg. So just whatever's on the outside, actually no, do whatever you just didn't lift. So you might have to move your chair. We're gonna do, still the same arabesque. When the leg goes behind you, let me show you the side view. There's the hip flexor stretch. But when the leg goes in front of you, you are working the hip flexors. For standing, if your foot's slightly turned out, it might help with balance. But if you want, you can keep it neutral. So a semicircle. Good. Whatever you want to do with that outside arm. I am not touching the floor, but I'm very close to it. And remember, our standing leg is slightly bent. So again, getting that hip action again. Now, can we lift a little higher? So when I lift higher, I'm gonna to try to keep my torso still as vertical as possible. So if I'm coming forward, I don't wanna do this. It's not wrong, it's just not the focus of the current exercise. That is still a very nice arabesque if you lean forward and keep the spine straight. But what we're trying to do here is keep the torso vertical and trying to get the most amount of lift we can. Any questions? Looks good. All right. It's okay if you need to bend your knees a little bit. I mean, we're we're ideally, you know, keeping the quads engaged and keeping the legs straight will benefit the quads. But it's okay if you need to bend your knees. All right, so the last variation of this before we switch to the other side, and I hope you have room behind you, but you're gonna sweep it back and you can either go into a curtsy lunge or you can go into a regular lunge. If you are deciding to go into a regular lunge, you just need to have the front foot in neutral, so keeping it forward. If you're going to a car seat lunge, then having the turnout is fine because that keeps it aligned with knees and toes. So option, and you don't have to do the lunge. Let me just show you the side here. I go forward into a car seat lunge. I'm gonna turn my foot forward, a sweep circular, but instead of crossing my body behind me, I go straight back. So from the here, curtsy lunge, or circle, straight back. All right, do eight of those. I know we've done like three already.
You want a pretty big step back when you go into that curtsy lunge. Probably about two more. Okay, and now we're gonna switch sides. So you want the chair, again, not on the same side as your moving leg. You don't wanna kick it. And starting with, starting with, uh, I really don't like this song, but it's okay, none of you can hear it. <laughs> starting with a close to the floor semicircle. Quality is always more important than quantity, so feel free to slow it down and really get the technique and the motion. My moving leg is very straight, or as straight as I can make it. My standing leg is slightly bent. They saw me, I sometimes forget to. I have to remind myself to keep it slight knee bent. Soft knees, we call it. Soft elbows. If you want your arms up here, you can. It's really up to you. It's good to have the arms up if you find that your chest like syndrome. Because your chest can be dropped uh, when your arms are low. It's really hard to have a dropped chest if your arms are high. Good. And remember the arms aren't, uh, the arms can always stay low. So let's start sweeping a little higher. But remember we're trying to keep that chest up. We're trying to keep the torso in the same position, even as our legs are moving in the hip socket joint. So a little more challenge to the hip flexor, outer thighs, and glutes, right? Depending on the position of your legs, hip flexor from the legs in the front, outer thighs to the side, glutes in the back. So more challenge with the legs higher. But feel free to pick any height you want for your legs. So now we're gonna add the lunge. So again, the curtsy lunge if you like. I'm going to do eight of these. One of the reasons I, uh, well, one, I'm a terrible counter, but one of the reasons why I base a lot of things on feel is because you ultimately don't want to stop until you're challenged anyways. And we can try to make our right and left sides symmetrical as much as we like. But given that we're all adults now and we've been almost asymmetrical our whole lives because we're either right hand or left hand dominant. Hey, you know what counting? What number are we on? <laughs> My point is that I'm not justifying why I don't count. It's just that if you have a really strong right side and every time you work it, it doesn't get challenged, then it's, it's you're not really doing much for your right side. It's good to know about imbalances, but I try to find something that's just challenging for everything. We're actually going to move into the upper body portion. Does anyone have any quick questions in the chat line? Okay. So you don't need your chair anymore unless you feel like sitting on it while you do um, upper body work. I, I'm using cans of beans, but you don't need anything. We're going to start with shoulders. Shoulders are one of our not only more delicate muscles, but it has 360 degree range of motion. And a lot of times we're not working our shoulders in the full range of motion. So we're really going to focus on that. All right. So starting with a lift and lower. My elbows are soft. A slight bend. Feel free to go at your own pace here. Ideally, we don't want to move too fast. Um, but we want to try to also not move so slowly that we don't get enough reps in. So this is your full range. Range of motion is important for weight training. If you sometimes have too great a range, uh, you're actually disengaging the muscle. So we want to find 
a position that really allows gravity to work on our arms. So getting those arms to shoulder height. Now bring it all the way up, but only come about halfway down, or what a rough estimate of halfway is. So here we just show in the range of motion. And this is the more challenging phase of this range, right? Because gravity has its greatest pull when our arms are parallel. Keep going with this. I just want to demonstrate that if we chose this range, this partial range, it doesn't do as much, right? Because we're really too low. Gravity's pulling our arms down anyways. We want to find the right range that challenges us. So we're going to shorten this range even more to about like the top 10%. So now you can almost pulse. You can always move a little faster when the range is really short. And here we're not letting the muscles rest at all. I know you feel it. You don't even need weights in your hands. Just your arms. Your arm weighs something. Good. The great thing is I don't have to count right now because everything I do on the right is also on the left. <laughs> so we're definitely symmetrical. All right, I'd like you to turn your palms up and curl. Yeah, I know your shoulders are so tired. Why? Because our elbows are still at shoulder height. So I'm coming to about 90 degrees. Don't punch yourself in the head. Not needed, not needed. And then I'm extending my arms, but I'm not locking it straight. All right, I want to protect that elbow joint. So I'd say it's about a 95% extension and about 90 degree bend. Good, really working those shoulders. This is why you don't want weights that are too heavy. Feel free to put down the weights if you're tired and your muscles are fatigued, but try to keep moving without weights. All right, watch this. See my palms are facing my head? Turn the palms so they face forward. Pretend you're holding a lid of a pot and you're putting the lid on the pot. Here's the pot. The pot's not down here. The pot lid is, or the pot top is parallel, parallel to the floor. We put it right here. I don't know if you can see yourself while you're in the Zoom, I mean, on your own screen, even if your video's off. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, probably not, but I want to look for angles, 90 degrees. Good. Yes, I like what I see. All right, final workout. Bring it in. Again, it's, it's a 90 degree arc. So moving my elbow from to the side to in front of my shoulders, that's 90 degrees. It's really about these angles. These are the most effective angles. Not only are they effective, they're also safe. But we also want to work not just in a way that benefits our muscles, but that doesn't injure our muscles. All right, we are done. I'm done. So here, when my arms are down, my shoulders are no longer engaged. That doesn't mean I can't bend my elbows and re-engage my biceps. So here, shoulders relaxed, biceps working. My palms are facing in. So let me just show you the side view. What's the profile? I mean, sorry, that's not what I meant to ask. I'm on the profile. What's my angles? This is like, you know, around 30 and this is 180. So the greatest um, pull that gravity has on our biceps is when our arms are at 90 degrees. There's that 90 degrees again, right here. So right here, when I have my arms about 90, I'm hovering between, let's say, 88 degrees and 92 degrees. What I'm not doing is this, keeping my elbows at 90 degrees and moving my arms. See how I'm swinging it? Yeah, it looks like I'm moving my weight, but the way you want to move your weight is that the elbow angle changes slightly. Now try turning your palm upward. Good. It's the same motion. Same pulsing at the exact 
to mid-range, so around 90 degrees. Now I'm going to increase this. So we're going to go from, I would say, that's too much math for me. Basically about a, the middle third, the middle third of that full range. So full range is all the way down to all the way up. Find that middle third. So it's a little greater range than what we were just pulsing at. My elbows are next to my side, so they're not out here. All right, biceps are actually generally stronger on our upper body than compared to shoulders and triceps. So you may or may not feel this if you aren't carrying weights that are heavy enough. All right, but we're gonna move on to triceps. Tri biceps, if you notice, we're pulling up, pulling up. Triceps, we're gonna press straight, straight. So to set this up, I'm gonna show you profile again. You gotta sit into a little squat, spine is straight, tilted. I'm gonna lift my elbows as high as I can, but it's generally gonna be about shoulder height. This is the start, 90 degrees. This is the end, 180, okay? Bend, straight. So from the front, you don't want your elbows out this far. You want it to go as far behind you as possible. It is still gonna be at a slight angle. Keep that chest up. Drop chest, lifted chest. Our spine is tilted, no doubt, but it doesn't mean our chest will drop. Triceps are gonna feel a lot sooner than our biceps. Again, mostly because our triceps are generally weaker than our biceps. Really emphasize getting those arms as straight as you can and try not to swing the elbows. So notice this, if I drop down like this, that's a swing. We're not going to swing, we're going to bend and extend, bend and straighten. When I bend, I'm also not going to pull my weights or my fist toward my shoulders. It's 90 degrees, range of motion. So the most challenging phase is the straightening part. So straighten and then just barely bend. Bend just enough so you have to straighten it again. Bend just enough so you can straighten it. That's what I meant to say. So I'm not coming to 90 degrees anymore. I'm going 180 to maybe 150. Yeah, I know you feel it. So feel free to, if you feel that muscular fatigue, you can take a break or drop the weights if you have weights and keep going. I know you feel this even without uh, weights. All right, final exercise. Take a quick shake out. Uh, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you from behind because I. Not that I want to show you my butt, but it's, this is how you do it. So right now I have my palms facing in, and you can either do that continually, palms face in, or you can turn the palms up and then squeeze it in. The point is that your arms are straight behind you, and then you're pulsing it by bringing the weights together or bringing your fists together. Actually, I'll just show you this without, without dumbness. Okay, so my palms, I'm in that same position, and I'm reaching my arm straight and I'm trying to clap my hands. But I'm keeping my arms straight. And I, don't worry, you're not gonna clap your hands. It's not, I don't think it's possible. But the point is that if you keep your arms straight and you squeeze in, 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 you're really gonna work your triceps. You can also have your palms up, bring your thumbs in. Wait, do you love me right now? Do you love this tricep exercise? I don't understand why you guys aren't smiling. Okay. All right. Okay, let's stand on up. I don't have my weights, but that's okay. I don't need them. Oh, I just hit the chandelier again. Bend and extend. At this point right now, it feels really good to bend the triceps, to bend the elbows, I mean. Because every time you bend the elbow, you stretch your triceps. My palms are face in, my elbows aren't out. My elbows are close. And you, if you don't have weights in your hand, you just gotta use a little bit of imagination. Pretend you're holding a ball 
like a, like a basketball or even a heavier ball, and you're going to throw it. And when you throw it, you got to extend your arms, throw, throw. So thinking about that motion will help engage the triceps. All right, final. So we're actually not going to pulse up here because anytime your arms are vertical, gravity doesn't have as great of a pull. So it's a little counterintuitive, but gravity has this greater pull down here. So here's where we're going to pulse. If you're with me last week, we did these similar exercises. And probably last week you were like, this stinks, this sucks. But every time we do it, it gets easier. Our muscles grow in response to the challenges we give it. All right? This is why fitness is a never ending journey. Because once your muscles grow and respond, you get stronger and then you find that next level of challenge. So you're constantly finding the next challenge. And it's fun. Keep those elbows close. Eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, and one. All right, so we're actually gonna, I'm actually gonna put these down. We're gonna get ready for our abdominal work and stuff, but to segue down into it, I want you to do what I call flies. Rear flies. So I'm sweeping my arms to the side. Really sit back, your torso is almost parallel. This allows your arms to lift up against gravity and squeeze the shoulder blades. So you're like a bird flapping your wings. Emphasize the lift. Feel your shoulder blades slide together. We're going to do this when we get on the ground and work our spine. This is really great for posture. So make sure your back isn't round when you do this. Stick your tailbone out. I'm also doing this to give your arms a little break from your triceps because we're going to do push-ups, which targets chest, but if your triceps are really fatigued, you're not going to want to do push-ups. Okay, four, three, keep flapping those wings, two, and one. And we're coming down on the ground for push-ups. You can be on your knees, hands wider than the mat, so wider than the shoulders. You can do a push up like this. Basically, my arms come to about 90 degrees. You can walk your hands forward. On your knees, but not with your butt over your knees. So notice the difference. And then you can pick push ups on your toes. So I'm going to have you guys all do eight push ups, any version you like. All right? If you want to do more than eight, you can. If you want to do less than eight, you can. On your toes is a plank position. So planks, work your abs. This is how we segue into the abs section. When you're done with your last push-up, the so push-up eight, go all the way to your stomach. Reach those arms out to a T. You're going to do the same thing we did right before this, which was standing. Lift your arms, squeeze your shoulder blades together, but you're also lifting your chest. So this gets into your spine as well as working your rear deltoids. So arms are straight to the side. It's not back here and it's not in front here. Straight to the side. Think of a capital T. Good. Once again, great for posture. Do a couple more and then flip over onto your back. All right, hands are going to support the head and neck. Feet are hip distance apart, knees bent. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower. We're not using our arms to pull on the neck. 
We're just supporting the neck. Now we want your lower back to be imprinted. So abdominals really engaged, pulling downwards, lower back on the mats. I'm gonna have you lift just one leg, about tabletop, so shins parallel to the ground, knee over that hip. I haven't rotated yet, I'm not rotating yet. I'm gonna add an extension of the leg and return. Now you can extend the leg high to the ceiling, little hamstring stretch on the diagonal or on a very low diagonal. A little more work when the diagonal is low. All right, let's switch sides. Starting a few crunches here, nice and slow. If you do your crunches very slow and controlled, you will feel your abdominals. A lot of times people either do too great a range of motion or they use momentum, they use a lot of speed. They're yanking on their neck. They're not using their abs. So we wanna focus on the abs. Go ahead and extend and then bring the knee in as the chest comes up. about two more and then we're going to keep the head neck and shoulders down lift both legs now if this bothers your lower back you can always keep one leg on the ground so we're going to extend one leg at a time this feels a little different when we're not involving the upper body because whenever we up, uh, lift the upper body, it actually helps reinforce the imprint. So our abs have to do a little bit more work with the imprints when the head, neck, and shoulders are down on the mats. Press into the floor. And then actually I'm going to have you try some arm and leg choreography. Same arm, same leg. It's all about reinforcing the imprint. Pick your angles. Your abdominals aren't just for crunching. It's not just about, you know, working to get that six pack. It's, your abs do a lot of work for stabilizing, keeping your spine in neutral, protecting your lower back. And that's what all of this is doing. I'm actually just trying to create weird motions, it's not super weird, but um, motion with my limbs to force my abs to stabilize. So I'm actually gonna open up. You can actually keep your legs together if you want. Kind of call this spazzing bug or spazzing dead bug. If you've ever seen a dead bug, they sometimes twitch and stuff. So here's like a normal dead bug with their, they're on their back and their legs are up, but then they might do something weird. And if you really wanted to kind of create a weird challenge for yourself, you don't have to be perfectly symmetrical about it. You can have one higher, one lower. I mean, it's almost like you can't control where your arms are going and your legs are going and they just go. And maybe you want to keep one vent. But regardless, like your abs have to respond to the weirdness that you do with your limbs. You know what I'm saying? All right, that ends that portion. <laughs>
All right, we're gonna, we're gonna stretch a little bit, but before I do that, I just wanna do um, a plank. So just the plank, not focus on push-ups or anything. Push-up really is a moving plank, but we're not gonna do the push-up part. You can do it on your elbows if you like. Elbows under the shoulders. You can do it on your wrists. Wrists underneath the shoulders. Reach those heels to the back of the room. This is our last 30 seconds of work. Try to have your butt about shoulder height. Squeeze your quads. Squeeze your butts. Squeeze your abs. Press into those forearms. Or push through those palms if you're on your wrists. So you want to engage the arms and shoulders area. About 15 seconds. That's going to be about three breaths. Three to four breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, and last one. Good. So we're going to do a quick stretch. And if you need to go back to work, feel free to go. A lot of our um, exercises are stretch and strength in one. So every time you kick your leg back, you're stretching your hip flexor. If you reach your leg forward, you're stretching your butt. So not a huge deal if you have to miss the stretch. Here, I'm, when I round my back, I'm actually stretching my upper back. But to really get a stretch, take that arm opposite of the straight leg and reach to the outside of that leg. Once you got a hold of the outside of the ankle, you can bend your elbows and deepen the stretch by pulling your chest down. I'm not just feeling my hamstring here, I'm feeling all along my back right here. Good, let's switch. Opposite arm. Grab the outside of that leg. Bend the elbows if you want. If the stretch is good enough for you there, you don't need to deepen the stretch. Generally speaking, you want to hold these stretch for about 20 seconds. Here's a nice hip opening stretch. We do quite a lot of hip opening exercises in the beginning part of class today. So if you want to see um, other bar workouts that I've done, you can just check out the bar workout playlist on YouTube. And I'm limited in quality in terms of what it looks like just because the laptop zoom camera is not high def. But I don't think anyone needs to see high def of me to see what I'm doing. Squats, lunges. Good. If you want to stand up for um, some extra, uh, more stretches, you can. We're going to stretch the side here. So if, if you're, this is my right, but your left leg goes behind you. Gonna be your left tricep. Whatever leg just went behind, that's the same side you're gonna stretch the triceps. If you don't feel the stretch, just lean a little bit more and pushing the hip out. Okay, so the switch sides. The leg that crossed behind, that same hip, pushes out, tricep, lean, get the obliques. Generally speaking, you don't want to stretch cold muscles. So if you've been sitting at your desk working and you're like, oh, I feel stiff, it's not necessarily a great idea to just like yank your muscles and start to lengthen it. Your muscles need to be a little bit warm before you decide to stretch it. So um, what I recommend doing instead is just move. So um, keep holding the stretch, but a great dynamic movement that you can do from your desk is just something like this. We're getting range of motion. Or this, arm circles. These are all great things to do. Let's switch sides. So movement-based, what we call dynamic stretches, is better for you if you're starting from a standstill. If you're starting from a seated, a 
haven't moved for the last two hours kind of uh, situation. Now, if you just went on a run and you're like, I feel really tight and want to stretch, then static stretches like this are great because your muscles are already warm. Okay, we've done it. That's the end of bar. I'm gonna go put my beans back in the pan.